Welcome to our channel. In this video, we discuss seven green technologies we need to save the world. 1. Carbon Capture and Storage. Carbon Capture and Storage, CCS, is the process of capturing CO2 before it enters our atmosphere, transporting it, and storing it underground for the next few hundred years. There are many capture techniques, such as absorption, adsorption, chemical looping, membrane gas separation, and gas hydration. After capture, the CO2 is compressed and transported via pipelines, road transport or ships for storage. Storage takes many forms, such as trapping the CO2 underground in deep geological formations, in empty oil fields, or in specific minerals. As of 2020, only one thousandth of global CO2 emissions are captured by CCS technology, highlighting the need for better direct air capture technology. Why do we need it? We need to reach carbon neutrality and reduce pollution by reducing consumption and developing technologies that pollute less. To achieve this, a combination of CCS, direct air capture, DACCS, and biomass capture, BECCS, will need to be implemented. Challenges Carbon capture and storage, CCS, technologies only work effectively where there is a high concentration of CO2. Extracting CO2 from thin air is difficult and expensive, and the technology has yet to reduce emissions from fossil fuel plants. Companies have turned to utilizing captured CO2 in value-added products, but long-term predictions about storage security are uncertain. CCS is seen as providing a loophole to move away from burning oil and gas as a source of energy. 2. Ocean Tech Ocean Tech offers tools based on the exploitation of data or natural resources of marine origin to address issues related to energy, agriculture, medicine, and cosmetics. According to Ocean Energy Europe, Ocean Energy can provide 10% of Europe's current electricity needs and 400k jobs by 2050. Startups are using deep-sea microbes, tidal turbines, wave energy converters, and solar energy to produce clean, reliable renewable energy. Companies are also farming marine organisms to produce complex biopolymers that can be used to produce medicine, cosmetics, or biodegradable sugars and plastics. Why do we need it? 71% of Earth's surface is water-covered, and the oceans hold 96.5% of all Earth's water. Marine biodiversity is larger than that of the terrestrial ecosystem, and using this resource can help us produce green energy and food more sustainably. However, we must be careful not to overuse technology in the oceans, lest we waste this precious resource. Challenges Ocean tech requires large investments to get started, but large companies are wary of the field. Startups are left to their own devices, and governments need to fund big bets to ensure we avoid catastrophic consequences. Few have answered this call, but those who have are sure to reap the rewards in the coming decades. 3. Green Mining Green mining is a technological concept that promotes material, water, and energy efficiency to reduce the environmental footprint of mineral-based products' life cycles. It can be done in several ways, such as natural gas produced and treated on-site, sprinklers used to reduce dust, and recycling and depositing tailings in impermeable ponds. Additionally, the area around a closed mine should be restored to make it safe and allow other types of land use. Why do we need it? Mining is an incredibly polluting industry, using land, water, and CO2 and dust. We need green mining to ensure future generations are able to use minerals while preserving the planet. Challenges Green mining is an oxymoron as it involves investments for the future, which late-stage capitalism rarely sees a use for. Politicians are of no help as making the industry more sustainable would also mean making short-term sacrifices. The only solution is to reduce global consumption, which few see happening anytime soon. 4. EVTOLs EVTOLs are electric vertical takeoff and landing aircrafts that combine the vertical takeoff of helicopters with the horizontal flight of airplanes. They are being discussed due to advancements in the fields of motors, batteries, fuel cells, and electronic controllers. Their aim is to improve urban air mobility, such as air taxi services, a more efficient way to transport goods, and quicker emergency services responses. 
Why do we need it? The most important details in this text are that urban transit can be improved, especially when it comes to deliveries. Using the skies to transport goods and people may be a way to reduce our over-reliance on trucks and cars in the city, and reclaim the streets. Individual aircrafts have an added benefit of being used as poster children to develop better ways of electrifying other modes of transportation at a large scale, which is why car manufacturers are paying close attention to the space. Challenges. In order to have working skies, safety regulations must be met, urban infrastructure must be developed, and it will be difficult to mass produce the complex components needed to make EVTOLs a success. 5. Next Gen Batteries. Next gen batteries are the future of energy storage and can take many forms. Lithium ion batteries are the most common, but alternatives are being developed, such as lithium sulfur batteries, which lower environmental impacts and manufacturing costs while reducing the battery's weight and providing high energy density. Solid state batteries are the holy grail, as they would improve safety levels and allow the use of new materials, enabling denser, lighter batteries with a better shelf life. Why do we need it? Batteries are an important part of the fight against climate change by helping to move cars, trucks and the power sector away from oil, coal and gas. Challenges. Next-gen batteries will need to be cheaply produced at a large scale, with manufacturing capacities we do not have today, and have a long lifespan to avoid landfills. They will also be dependent on the chargers we use, a technology that still needs to evolve. 6. Wireless Electricity. Wireless electricity, or wireless power transfer, is a technology that allows electricity to be transferred from one place to another without the use of a wire. It is used for short distances and electromagnetic radiation for long distances. It is not new and has many commercial uses, but as our needs evolve, it could go much further. Wireless power transmission can eliminate the need for wires and batteries, increasing the mobility, convenience, and safety of our devices. Why do we need it? Wireless uses more energy than its alternatives, but the benefits of WPT outweigh the negatives. We need this technology to minimize the need for new hard wiring, decrease our dependency on batteries, and have a more efficient IoT industry. It's also easier and more convenient to use, as I'm tired of looking for the charger every night before going to bed. Challenges the most important details are that next-gen batteries and wireless electricity threaten the energy industry, and that human health must be taken into account when testing the technology. So far, so good. 7. Synthetic Biology Synthetic biology is the process of redesigning living organisms to allow them to have abilities nature hadn't foreseen. It is not new, but it is complex and expensive to change a genome. It can transform organisms to produce substances like biofuels, silk, vitamins, and chemicals for more accessible medicine. It can also create crops that act as biosensors, or give microbes the ability to biologically degrade soil, air and water pollutants into non-toxic substances. Some experiments have even been made to degrade gas waste to turn it into fuel, while bioprinted organs are slowly being tested on humans. Why do we need it? The 8 billion people on Earth need to be fed, stay healthy, and have a planet on which they can grow old. The ability to create heat-resistant crops, develop cheap medicine, and slow down or reduce the harm we're causing our planet is possible if we overcome challenges. Challenges. Synthetic biology has many ethical challenges, such as its ability to recreate a polio virus from scratch. Biosecurity concerns have led to regulations but these need to be reviewed in the coming years if we want to create a world better adapted to global warming and 8 billion inhabitants. We must also consider the long-term implications of using and consuming synthetic biology for our health and safety. As always, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this.